Take the Beanbag. Written by Rosie Hernandez. Illustrated by Rebecca Sampson. The school bell rang. Emma joyfully skipped down the curved path, holding her mama's hand. What did you learn today, honey? asked mama. Emma smiled and explained how Mrs. Maple taught the class about great explorers and famous heroes. Mrs. Maple wants the class to choose one person from history that we most admire to present to the class. Unsure of whom to choose, Emma headed to the public library to meet Miss Lydia, the librarian. I want to learn about great explorers and heroes of the world, explained Emma. No problem, dear. Right this way. Grab what books you need and plop on a beanbag. Time seemed to fly while Emma read. Book after book. She soon became encaved in a fort of knowledge. Making her way to gather more, Emma crawled under the towering books. Just then, Emma felt the wooden floor turn cold and wet. It began rocking side to side, up and down. She couldn't believe what she saw. Standing at the head of a wooden rowboat was America's first president, George Washington. Emma's eyes grew wide as she heard President Washington shout, Row! Row for your lives! Row for your nation and freedom! Quickly, Emma grabbed the oar in front of her and began rowing along. Push and pull! The waves crashed against the boat as the wind blew the American flag proudly in the air. Suddenly, the flag hugged Emma's face, shielding her eyes. As Emma pulled the flag away, she felt the wood beneath her grow warm and dry. An echoing voice surrounded her. But amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It was Thomas Jefferson signing the Declaration of Independence. Fifty-six signatures marked the document as Jefferson handed Emma the inked quill pen. Emma crawled upon the table in the Independence Hall, and as she began to sign, she was swept away by a familiar sight. Higher and higher she flew into the sky. Emma sat up, fixing the pilot goggles upon her nose. <gasps> Amelia Earhart, she cried. Why, you're the first woman ever to have flown across the Atlantic Ocean. Right you are, doll. Remember, adventure is worthwhile in itself. They swiftly flew up and down, passing soaring birds and clustered white clouds. Just then, Amelia and Emma plowed their plane, Bessie, into a cloud shaped like the Lincoln Memorial. Emma felt herself skipping above a pool, hearing the sound of hands clapping together in harmony. When Emma reached the top of the steps, she heard a man shouting, Oh! Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. addressed America's people on the importance of human rights and equality. Emma was intrigued when suddenly she was startled by the sound of blown trumpets and singing violins. Louder and louder the music became as Emma approached the heart-pounding orchestra of woodwind and strings. It grew dark around her, lights beaming towards two white-gloved hands, waving together and apart, up and down. The great Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was conducting one of his most famous musical numbers, the final trilogy. Emma whispered to the trombone player, Mozart was just four years old when he first composed a symphony. He is so gifted. Emma did not hesitate to reach out and grab the shiny bassoon to join in. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Just as she was about to give that horn a big blow, she felt the splatter of something cold upon her cheek. Emma went to touch her face, only to see a mixture of bold-colored paint smudged on her fingertips. Covered in royal blues, emerald greens, and golden yellows, Emma smiled and joined in with famous artist Vincent Van Gogh. 
in one of his most favored paintings, A Starry Night. Stroke and smear, she danced her paintbrush across the canvas. The painting began to surround Emma as she twirled about, smiling. Soon, the sky turned dark. The stars began to appear, and out at a distance was an eclipsed moon. Emma plopped down from spinning, and as her vision became clear, she noticed a man. He had white hair that went every which way, and curious eyes leaning upon a large telescope. Making her way to him, Emma realized that this mysterious man was brilliant physicist Albert Einstein. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination said Einstein. He was indeed a man of great wisdom. Why, he formed the general theory of relativity, one of the most significant scientific discoveries of all time. Just as Emma was about to shake his hand, he became a silhouette of stardust whirling around her. Three, two, one, blast off. Emma's world became smaller and smaller as she blasted into space. Shh! This is Space Cadet Mae Jemison. We are all clear and entering into the outer atmosphere. Get ready to pull the lever to release the thrust, Cadet Emma. She was the first female African-American astronaut to enter into space, and Emma was thrilled to be a part of the excitement. The space shuttle zipped into a cloud of red and purple gases, clouding Emma's face. When Emma blew the cloud away, she began to smell the scent of freshly baked pastries. Ah, that smells wonderful, whispered Emma as she exhaled. <laughs> bon appetit, a woman shouted. Please join me. It was America's French cooking chef. Julia Child. The metal pans slid in and out of the oven faster than light. Emma reached out to grab a muffin when she suddenly fell into a pillowcase of flour. Standing up, Emma saw rows of glass beakers and test tubes that ran and twisted every which way. Emma looked up at a woman, catching a glimpse of the name on her coat. Marie Curie, whispered Emma. Marie turned her way, saying, Yes, I think I have found it, my dear. A way we can use radiation therapy to treat cancer. But this is only the beginning. Wow, exclaimed Emma as she watched Marie jot down her findings into her journal. Just then, bursts of gray smoke and mist filled the room. Emma crawled under the lab table and began making her way towards a bright light. Emma crawled through and noticed the sun beaming through a large window. She began seeing towers of books all around her. The sun felt toasty and warm upon her cheeks. Emma's eyes felt heavy and began to close. She felt the warmth of a hand brushing her hair. Sweetheart, wake up. It's time to go home. Did you find anyone you're interested in? Oh, Mama! You won't believe the adventure I just had, Emma shouted. Tell me all about it, sweetie, whispered Mama as they made their way to the checkout counter. The end.